Hello there, fellow Forex fanatics. Omar here with your weekly outlook for the 28th of June, 2015. Okay, uh, before we get started with the analysis, uh, let's talk about some things kind of in general and this week. Uh, now, this week is, of course, the end of June, the beginning of July. Uh, I'm pretty sure that all of you know that uh, coming up this weekend is going to be 4th of July. Now, because of that, they're doing things slightly different with NFP. So NFP is going to be on Thursday, not Friday. Um, and then the U.S. markets are going to be closed on Friday. And then on Wednesday, I believe, we have Canada Day, and the Canadian markets will be closed. Obviously, we should avoid Canadian-based Forex pairs on that day. So we don't have our normal Thursday to trade before NFP because NFP is going to be on Thursday and that's something that we have to be cautious with so we've got a couple of bank holidays lots of news this week and on top of it and this was the other thing I want to talk about we have Greece and of course we know that the Greece situation is quite dire and every time a deal is brought to the table Greece rejects it uh, it's just too much of a burden for them and so no matter what kind of bailout deal is offered they always seem to have a problem with it. So I really think that that is primarily uh, one of the major factors as far as what's holding up the market and why we're just not getting any run out or any real big moves on a lot of pairs. So let's get right to uh, the business part of trading and let's talk about some potential trades this week. Uh, on the Euro US dollar, we look at last week's weekly candle, and yes, that is a bearish engulfing. And so it, it really does fit um, all my requirements for a good engulfing formation. But I'm going to talk to you about why I'm not so sure about it. So we are always looking for context, and where did it come from? And we had three up weeks. That's good. Uh, we have to reject a certain area of support resistance. That we did. We had uh, 1.1375. That's great. And it was finally a true engulfing formation. Now remember the bonus one is that it takes out a new area of support and resistance. And this is part of the problem I have with this is that it didn't take out the daily uh, 55 EMA. Now the second problem I have with it that if this was to be a really good engulfing formation then it probably should have or could have taken out the trend line as well. So this is a trend line that I'm going to be focusing on for the short side of the equation here and for the long side of the equation we'll be looking at 1375. Let's go ahead and take a look at this on the daily and we can see that and we can even put this trend line in. I like to have multiple touches so one, two, three, four and that will probably uh, be the way to go. So essentially for shorts, we need not only a breakout of the 55 EMA, but of the trend line as well. So essentially how we would do this is we'd look for, you know, maybe a breakout of just the 55 EMA, a retest, and then something that closes below the trend line. Or we could look for the, the whole shebang, where we break out the trend line and 55, come back, and then close below there or simply pull back to the trend line and then reject away and we're good to go short. Now what we need for the long is we need a good break uh, in a secondary move above 13.75. So we'd be looking for a breakout, pull back, and then a move away. And that's pretty simple uh, on the euro I think as long as we have some good daily range which we've been getting a little bit tough on um, just due to all the factors and it is summer and we're starting July. So be careful, but I think there's some good opportunity there. Let's look at the pound. Okay, here's the pound U.S. dollar on the weekly. And you can see that unlike the euro U.S. dollar, it did not have an engulfing formation. In fact, this certainly looks like more of an uptrend. Remember, we finally really took out uh, 56.25 and the weekly 55 EMA. You know, I felt that was kind of the line in the sand. It looks like we've done that. Um, once again, you know, we have to kind of think about things like this. Uh, this so essentially what we really need to get into a, a, a good established downtrend is a break below this trend line and, you know, possibly below 52.7, which we know is a major area. But for the time being, we have to consider long trades because this is uh, the way the market is presenting itself. 
And so the key area, I would think, if we can get the pullback, we did close under uh, 5750. And so we'll be looking to 5625 for longs. Uh, and this is kind of the ideal area to look for pullbacks. Now there is the opportunity for aggressive traders. Uh, if we break below 5600 to look for a secondary move, but remember we've got the daily 200 and the daily 55 in the same spot, so there's not a whole lot of room. I'm not sure that I would personally uh, favor that. <clears throat> now, if we don't, <clears throat> pardon me, if we don't get a pullback down to 5625, then the next area I'm going to be watching is 5900 uh, for a move. Even if we Break 5900 and then pull back to 5850 and then close back up above 5900. That really gives us an opportunity to long there. Keeping in mind that 6000 and a whole a bunch, a whole new set of, uh, you know, as a EMA 55 monthly, weekly 200 is right above us, not to mention the whole number of 6000. So it really is kind of a bit of a tough play and there's not a whole lot of room, but if you, uh, can deal with that on smaller time frames. After all, it is the summer, so we won't necessarily be shooting for the stars right now. There might be a trade there. So let's look at the odds. Here's the Australian dollar versus the US dollar on the weekly. And you can see that, again, it's different than the pound and the euro. And remember, um, I've talked about this a lot, that in kind of the best trading situations, we find a lot of harmony between the euro US dollar, pound US dollar, and Australian dollar US dollar. Uh, and when they're all kind of different, it really signifies that maybe the market is a little bit uh, confused or you know, really kind of unsure about the overall direction of things. So we can play them independently, but I always suggest uh, never to take positions in opposite directions on correlated pairs like that. So we just have to choose the best option uh, for our trading. Now, in my opinion, uh, the Australian dollar uh, versus US dollar did break a key area. 7,700 is important, uh, and we finished another week below it. I remember the last couple times that we've done that, uh, we've come right back up. What we've really got going on is we've got this a bit of a, a weekly range between 76 and 78. So what we really need to do is we need to break out of the bottom end of the range, and I, I've applied a couple of extra lines this week, 7600 and 7550. Uh, we really need to break out of 7550 to uh, you know make a downtrend, and we need to break out above 7800 at least to get back up to 8000. Uh, and so those are kind of the bigger areas we're going to be looking for breakouts on. However, in in the meantime, we can look for uh, various types of trades. Of course, we saw, you know, that 7,800 in a daily 55 EMA, very good resistance areas. Uh, for me personally, I'll be looking for a pullback to 7,700. And on smaller time frames, because we only have 100 pips to go to 7,600, um, I'll be looking for a bit of a rejection maybe on the one hour or on the four hour. Uh, to trade short and then just grab a little bit of profit. You know, we have to kind of trade the markets that we're given. And if we don't have big markets, then it's really a lot harder to make big trades. So when I see the markets get kind of smaller like that, I just shoot for smaller trades. And, um, you know, uh, if the markets aren't moving that much, then you don't need a giant stop loss either. You just need to protect yourself wisely with some support and resistance and, uh, you know, make smaller targets. And it, it's, a, it's a shame because our reward risk ratio isn't really kind of at the optimal level, but you can still make money. So let's look at the euro pound. Okay, here's the euro pound on the weekly. And we can see from last week that we made a breakout and a close below 71.50. And that's, remember, that's a pretty significant area. Uh, it looks like we might be on our way to 7,000. Uh, this makes a lot of sense because the euro is showing a lot more softness than the pound is. And so how do we want to play this? Well, uh, you can see that we already had a pullback and a bit of a rejection from 71.50, but with it being a new week, we can certainly look for this trade again. Look for a pullback to 71.50 and another rejection with 7,000 as uh, our target. Now, of course, there is another way to do this, because what if we don't get a pullback? Well, then where, you know, where do we look? And we can go with a shorter term trend line, uh, like this little fellow right here. And what we'd be looking for is we'd be looking for a breakout, pullback, and rejection from that. 
trend line. So we have essentially two options here. We can either look for the pullback and then a rejection, or we can look for the breakout, pullback, and then rejection. In either case, we're talking about 7,000 as our overall target, but if we reject 7,150, we have to mine the trend line. Uh, and so this would be either a take profit, uh, partial take profit, or a stop adjustment area. And remember, all you have to do um, when you're not too sure about an area of support resistance, just protect yourself by moving your stop. And if you get, you know, if it comes back up against you, you get taken out, oh well, you didn't lose anything. Uh, if the market decides to run hard, uh, then you, uh, you know, you're not really risking anything extra. In fact, you know, you're in a less risky position. Now, sometimes there is the case of there's a, there's a cost always with everything in trading that it comes up, takes you out, and then, and then runs. But again, uh, you have to weigh what's more important to you. You know, are you okay with taking the stop loss uh, if the market does run against you once it hits that support and resistance, or are you? And this is all about psychology because both strategies are uh, can be winning strategies if you just stick to it. Um, because you know, like Dean, he places a trade, puts a stop loss, and he waits for the take profit to get hit. So if there's any volatility, he doesn't he doesn't get taken out at break even. Um, but sometimes, you know, we do bounce hard off these areas and then they run against you. And, you know, looking back on it, oh, geez, I wish I was at, you know, break even. So you kind of have to decide what kind of trader you want to be because both uh, bo both styles have their advantages and disadvantages. But that's where I see it. Alternatively, and this would be counter trend in my opinion, um, if we break back up above 7150 and uh, head higher, again, 55 EMA is of concern as well as a trend line horizontal support and resistance which we could essentially look for a bigger pullback up there and then look to short again uh, but that might be a little bit too much for the week so we'll see uh, let's look at the US yen. here's the US yen on the weekly and I'm really really hoping that you guys were able to uh, profit from the bounce off 122 remember how we talked about that this was a major area and that the bearish engulfing was really looking to me just like a pullback rather than a reversal and until we broke below 122 again which I felt was very unlikely uh, we would be looking to take longs from there and that has worked out very very well it's a nice 200 pip stretch um, and uh, of course we're not looking for exactly 122 why because we have a 55 EMA we know how important that uh, that EMA is so that's ideally where you're looking for your rejection um, now this week we didn't break 124, and so it's the USCN isn't showing a tremendous amount of strength, uh, and so essentially, I, I say we, you know, we still employ the same technique that we're looking for another pullback and rejection back higher with 124 as our target. Um, alternatively, we can look for a breakout above 124 or above 125.35. Uh, of course, if we do break 122, then I would think that would might be the biggest move of all. Uh, but certainly, with the way that the USCN has been running uh, for months and months and months, uh, I think the long trade is probably preferable. But we'll have to see. We may be kind of getting into another range situation. Of course, we don't have a tremendous amount of... Uh, you know price data yet so between 122.50 and 124 um, and then the longer we're in that range we look for the breakout and we trade the heck out of the breakout because uh, the longer it's in the range usually the better the breakout plays let's look at the euro yen now the euro yen has been a bit of a tough cookie lately um, and we can see directly from the weekly chart that we've had three weeks of essentially sideways movement and multiple four attempt you know on the weekly four big attempts to get through 140 now that's very useful information as far as i'm concerned and it indicates that a true breakout of 140 would be very very important to the market so essentially that's kind of our upside area that we want to break to go long and then we also have a trend line which is a good indicator of where to go short and in this case, it looks like a break of 137.70, which we know is a pretty important support and resistance area, would indicate the break of this trend line. However, we do have some nasty bits of support and resistance. So for me personally, I would go short only uh, if we got a break out of 135. 
So I'm really looking for 130, 140 to go long or 135 to go short. Now in the interim, uh, we can look for other types of trades, which is uh, on this kind of on the smaller scale, we can look for bounces back up from 137. We can look for shorts from 140. We could wait for a bigger pullback um, into these areas of support resistance that I, was, that I was saying were sticky, and we move higher. However, based on what we're seeing in the price action, this looks like another uh, somewhat sideways market. So it might just be better to look for short-term longs uh, between 137 and 70 and 140, and then short-term shorts between 140 and 137.70, with 139 being an area of concern, stop adjustment, you know, partial take profit, whatever you want to do. So that's the way I see the Euro Yen. Let's look at the Aussie Yen. Now, as hard as the Euro Yen's been, the Aussie Yen has been even tougher, in my opinion. Uh, but it's also got some really nicely well-defined areas to uh, to look for breakouts for. And that, of course, uh, like I think I've said it a million times now, the upside break is going to be 96.50. The downside break is going to be 94.5. However, I also think 95.75 plays and is tradable. Let's look at it on a smaller time frame. You can see that that's why I call this an area of interest or an important area uh, in which to adjust your stop. And here's another example of looking for that secondary move. So we break above it, but we don't place our long order here. We are looking for a secondary move to get up to 96.50, and you would not get hurt by um, the reversal instead. So, you know, in, in particularly if we're not trending, uh, those secondary entries are very, very important to look for to save yourself from the potential reversal. Now we've got a lot of kind of choppy markets and really conservative traders will want to wait until we break 96.5 or 94.5 to the downside. Um, gives us a little bit of space. Ideally I prefer 96.5 so because uh, we've got a lot of open space that way. So let's look at the CAD pairs. This is our US CAD on the weekly and you can see from our weekly candles we've had two weeks of not a whole lot of gain or loss. The bodies are very, very small, and because of that, we have to employ extra caution because the market clearly isn't sure which direction it wants to go. It is using the 55 EMA as kind of a center point. So you can see that the market sells off a bit, the bears get control, and then they get pushed right back up to the 55, then the bulls go in control, and by the end of the week, they get pushed right back down to the 55. And those aren't exactly ideal trading conditions for anybody who wants uh, to hold an order and, and take some good profits. So essentially what we're looking for for shorts is we want to see this trend line broken. So a good push away from the daily 55. Um, and the top area is going to be 24.75. And that's where we're going to be looking for uh, a secondary move above there. However, just like with the other pairs, we look for the major areas to break, and then we can always think about trading kind of the minor areas. So we can look for, again, a nice bounce off 55 to get up to 24.75, a breakout pullback, secondary move to get down to either the trend line or 2100. Now, it doesn't leave you a tremendous amount of area, so remember, this is going to be handled probably on smaller time frames or left alone completely. Again, you, you have to choose what, what style you like. You don't have to trade. Uh, when the markets are bad. In fact, you know, you can make a lot of money just being very, very choosy about when and how you trade. Take the good trades, the juicy ones, and just stand on the sidelines. But I know that there's some of you out there that like to be a bit more active in your trading. And so that's kind of what, you know, kind of what we're looking for here. Now for the upside, of course, 2475 is much more important. But I know that Many of you will be looking at this triangle as well. Now, the, the, the bottom trend line for me is much more important because if we just simply break above the top trend line but fail to break 2475, I'm not interested in it. However, if we break this lower trend line, it looks pretty good. Let's look at the EuroCAD. Okie dokie, here's the EuroCAD on the weekly. Now, um, I hope that you can immediately recognize that there is a lot of similarity between this and the euro US dollar. We've had a bearish engulfing formation that has come to rest 
right again on the daily 55 and has failed to take out the major trend line. So this gives us a really good uh, identi you know, identification as far as what we're looking for to break. And here's where the major break areas are. Looking for below the daily 55 or above 4100. That's to get us out of the bigger area for hopefully a more sustained move. However, on the smaller time frames, there is the opportunity to trade under the daily 55 with a target of 36 uh, to the upside. We can look to trade above 3800 with 3950 as our target. 200 EMA is very important though, and so it kind of negates it. Again, EuroCAD right now is not the sweetest pair to trade. Sometimes it's it's one of my favorites, and other times it should be left alone. I really feel that at this time uh, it should be left alone. So anyway, guys, I will catch up with you on Wednesday. Uh, I hope you have some good trades. Again, remember it's better to get your trading in early in the week with NFP. But if we don't have the right situation, then just leave everything alone. I wish you all the best. I'll catch you in a couple days.